News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800-288-WBAP is our number. That's 800-288-9227. Wow. Uh, we have two votes. Uh, one that called in, one off the air on Twitter. But now we have two more votes to say Commander needs to be taken out. It's time for Command of the Dog to die. Governor Christine Noem offering to take it, not offering, actually saying she's going to take him out next here. And former House Speaker Newt Gingrich said, killing the dog and then writing about it ended any possibility of her being picked as VP. You talk multiple times about it. In fact, at the end of the book, you say the very first thing you would do if you got to the White House that was different from Joe Biden is you'd make sure Joe Biden's dog was nowhere on the grounds. Commander, say hello to Cricket. It, are you doing this to try to, to look tough? Do you still think that you have a shot at being a VP? Well, number one, Joe Biden's dog has attacked 24 Secret Service people. So how many people is enough people to be attacked and dangerously hurt before you make a decision on a dog? And well, what he's to not do with living it? at the White that's, House That's anymore. a question that the president should be held accountable to. You're saying um, he should be that's shot? That's what the president should be accountable to is what is what is the number? Absolutely. She says it's time to kill him, take him out. And she's like, but he's not there anymore. Doesn't mean we can't get him. We can still go down and get him. We can figure out where he's at. We can go take him out. All right. What do you say? Uh, is, should Commander be on that hit list, too, as well? Should Commander be next after Cricket the dog, taken out to the gravel pit and put out? Uh, second of all, she talked about meeting Kim Jong-un in her book, but now she says, no, I didn't. What? I remember when I met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I've been a children's pastor, after all. Did you meet Kim Jong-un? Well, you know, as soon as this was brought to my attention, um, I certainly uh, made some changes and looked at uh, this this passage. And I've met with many, many world leaders. Uh, I've traveled around the world. Uh, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, we went forward and have made some edits. OK, so um, I wonder. So she says that uh, it's time to take out uh, a commander. And then you hear there she supposedly met with Kim Jong-un. What, what do you say? I mean, by the way, my votes, you can vote on uh, Twitter at Chris Crock Show. That's at Chris Crock Show, C-H-R-I-S-K-R-O-K. Um, I guess this is where you go if it's time to take your dog out. You go to Governor Christian Noem's gravel pit. It's like a pilgrim pilgrimage people can make. Apparently, you got a bad dog. What's a Seamus? Remember that Rip Mitt Romney's uh, dog was bad. They had to put him up on the on the roof or whatever. Got to put the dog up on the roof. You're on long trip road trip with uh, Seamus up at the top above above the car. Why not bring Seamus to the gravel pit? I understand it's a free it's free charge. She does it for free. Maybe she can do that if the vice presidential candidate doesn't work out. Uh, all right. Uh, so far, six votes is tied online on Twitter at Chris Croc Show. Chime in at Chris Croc Show on Twitter. Rachel in uh, Comanche, you're on 820 AM and now 93.3 FM WBAP. What do you say? Are you wh wh Which way do you go? Do you support Governor Christy Noem? And uh, should she take out Commander? And what do you say? Well, I think that any dog that's attacked 24 people probably is going to have to go. I'm not sure that Christy Nome's statement about it is the best way for her to get elected. But. I have to say, you know what, you're you're right. I mean, if you attack Secret Service or any anybody, separate people 24 times, you're freaking Cujo. Joe Biden's dog is Cujo. Yeah. I mean, the way you, just, the way you presented, you are... Are you are you a are you a, a criminal defense attorney or a prosecutor? No, sir. You sure sound like one to me. The way you came across, you just made it simple. You you presented your case. You rested. No further questions, Your Honor, and the case is done. Well, I mean, twenty four times you attack some different people. You got to go to you're going to doggy hell. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I mean, seriously, you made a damn good point. Um, so she, uh, I guess, I appreciate she's, your program. Yeah, well, no, thank you. But go ahead. You were saying though, uh, how about how your vice 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 presidential pick? Is she off the list now because of uh, her statements? And uh, if I, I think she's more hurt by the Kim Jong Un thing than the dog. Yeah, I mean, why why would the governor of South Dakota need to meet with Kim Jong Un? I mean, what is this? What is this crap? Yeah, that's strange. How did they get into her book? 
I don't did know. you see her face in this these interviews? She literally was that was on Sunday morning uh, this this week or yesterday morning on this week on CBS or whatever face the nation face the nation or whatever. Anyways, no, I get all my news from you. Well, th- oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh, holy shit! I didn't hit my button right. Thank you. A big hug from downtown Dallas. So, uh, okay, who should who do you want Trump to be uh, for vice president for? Uh, which one do you want to be the uh, Trump's vice president? I should say which which one of these candidates. Um, I think Marco Rubio would be great. Me too. All right. Uh, I'll read off the rest of them real fast. Tim Scott, Jay Vance, Mike Lee, Marsha Blackburn, Doug Burgum with the Caterpillar eyebrows the size of uh, horses, uh, Christy Nome, uh, the executioner, uh, Elise Stefanik, Byron Donalds from Florida. He's a good one, actually. I didn't think about him. Uh, Wesley Hunt from Texas, Michael Walls from Florida. Any of those guys or somebody else? Mm. Marco Rubio? Know. I think Marco Rubio, probably out of all those. Okay. Rachel, you are awesome. Keep calling and appreciate you. All right. Take Thank care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That was great. That was awesome. She was great. All right. Uh, so let's see, guys. The votes are moving. Hurry up and vote. I don't know why it says there's one day left. I told it 30 minutes on the poll. It's it's telling me a day left. Go freaking figure. This is why I don't know how to do this. Cry. I am so inept. I am so inept. Behold my ineptitude. If I had to take a dog out of the gravel pit, I'd probably miss. <laughs> That's how I, I just pull. I'd probably shoot my own foot. Oh, crap. I miss. Oh, oh, get that damn dog over here. You know, get that dog over here. It's going to, I'll take it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Where were we? Oh, we're having too much fun tonight. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288. Can I tell you spontaneously what I did yesterday? Actually, two days ago, I went out in my stu. I, I hate, I hate, for, you know what thatch is? You know what thatching is? If you have to thatch a lawn, you know what that means? It's hell. It means you have to rake the freaking lawn and get all the dead grass up that's like interwoven in the in the live grass. Anyway, I try to do... I, I have like, it, it was a lot bigger than I was thinking it would be. I did, all I did was uh, one, not even a quarter of my front yard. And it took three hours and I was like, I was like beaten up with a bat. I mean, it's intense where you're like rake, 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 And then it's just insane. And I got blisters all over, you know, anyway, so... That was Saturday for three hours, and I didn't have enough time to get it done at all. I would—I realized this is going to take me 15 hours with my yard. And so then I went and finally got a power rake. You know what those are? Power rake is, uh, it looks like a rototiller almost, you know what I mean? And it just, it goes down, and it just, it rakes it for you, and it just goes. And it, you just leave it, oh, 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 there's a pile of uh, the grass, a nice soft pile of grass. You know, on top, and that's the stuff you wanted to remove. But then, so I did that yesterday. I rented one of those things. I got it done instead of like 20 more hours or something like that. I did it in like an hour. <laughs> I did it like an hour, hour and a half max. And then I got my massive lawn leaf blower, like my jetpack one. That's like it's like three, four hundred dollars. It's one of those uh, ones that you see the professional landscapers using. I have one of those, and it's really loud and annoying, but it's really powerful. And so I was blowing up these things into piles like it was leaves, because like you can do that. It was like, oh, thank God, I'm not doing this. I'm not raking all that crap up. So I had like piles. It, w- it was literally like one, two, three massive piles in the front, massive. I'm talking like 10 diameter circle, like a foot high uh, or more. And then I had one, two, three massive ones on the side of the yard. Okay. And then you know how many lawn bags? Take a guess, uh, Steve. Uh, uh, what? Uh, how many? Sean. I'm sorry, Sean Allen. Sean Allen. Take a guess. How many bags, Steve? Sorry about that. How many bags did I fill up? You know, you fill up those leaf, the leaf, uh, the 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 compostable bags, the, pla- the 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 brown ones you get from like Home Depot, or whatever. Take take a guess how many of those I filled up. Three. Twenty nine. Twenty nine of those freaking bags. 20 freaking, I listened to everything on Fox News all day and all night, and I was listening to reruns. I was out there so long. It was dark, and I'm hauling this crap out. People are looking at me like, what, is somebody breaking, is somebody stealing stuff out of somebody's yard? No, it's me with my freaking lawn bag! Back off! And yes, I was carrying. I was strapped as I was doing this. And I did it! 
And then I walk in, and my wife's like, "What are you doing?" It's like ten o'clock. What, what, what do you? Why are you doing this? Why, why do you? Why do you insist on you have to keep? Once you get, stuff? my daughter is there. She's like, oh, she's like an expert in ADHD now because she's learned everything. She, she goes, oh, people who have ADHD when they want to do something, they hyper focus on it, and they love that sense of accomplishment. It rewards them when they're done. I'm like, thank you, thank you. My own daughter gets me. My wife's like, no comment. <laughs> she's like, what are you doing? No comment. No, it was, she, she wasn't like whatever. She didn't care. I was like, thank you. Somebody cares. Somebody gave dad a bone here. Anyways, I do. It looks dang good. Dang good. Dang good. All right, spontaneous segment over. Now we get to coming up next to the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP and now on FM at 93.3. Uh, ABC host... You, they, they are all George Stephanopoulos and some other guy are announcing the sirens that the, basically they all think Joe Biden's going to lose now. They're like begging everybody and trying to scare you into voting for Joe Biden this fall. It, it, it's incredible what we're seeing. And Joe Biden's administration is acting like they know he's not going to win based on what they're trying to push through and other things. I'm going to tell you all about that next. You do not want to miss this. And um, we'll talk about if it seems like the media and Joe Biden's people already know he's not going to win this November. 800 288 WB. AP is a number 800-288-9227. Yes, I'll take some of your continued thoughts on who should, which dog should be taken out next and which uh, person should be vice president. It's on the Chris Crock Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Real fast, we got Becky in Arlington who wants to talk about uh, who she wants for VP. And Bill in Fort Worth wants to talk to me about my thatching my lawn adventure. I literally have one, two, three... Four blisters on my hand. What do the Beatles say from the White Album? I got blisters on my fingers! You don't know that part? Neither of you? Holy crap, both of you two are fired. I'll play it for you coming up next. Oh my gosh, that's not, it's the, I think it's the White Album or something. It's the most, one of the most, it's the freaking Beatles! Where the hell have you guys been? Excuse my language. All right, 800 wbap Bill in Fort Worth. Hello, sir. Hey guys, I uh, just kind of curious. Uh, I was watching the. I, I want to hear your thoughts on this. So uh, you're talking about you know using a gas blower and you know you know everybody's taking heat for all this different kind of stuff. I'll I used that. a gasoline uh, blower, yeah, 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 a two-stroke yeah. engine, and I used a well, gasoline no, no, powered. Is, one second, sir. I used a gasoline. Po- hold on. I used. Hold on. Jump, 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 Relax. We're not talking about nuclear warfare here, dude. We're talking about Milan. Relax. No, I know, no, no, no. Okay, I'm under- I keep. I know you're on my side, but if you you don't, you won't let me talk. You're on my side and you want to take the show over. Relax, sir. Take a breather. Uh, the uh, power rake, which I'd never used before, also was powered by gasoline. Go ahead with your question or your pom- comment, sir. All right. So the question is, when's the last time you washed your car with soap in, a, uh, in the neighborhood? It's been a while. I, I, pay, I, pour, I pay plebes. I pay plebes to come to, to go wash my car I at places. I got yelled at. Uh, for uh, for putting too much uh, 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 like well, that's great in the, in the gutters. <laughs> that is yeah. absolutely great. So, who by one of your yeah. leftist neighbors? Do what? One of your leftist neighbors? Well, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I would assume so. I don't know. Anyways, and I was kind of, and I I felt like awkward doing it in the first place. I was like, man, someone's going to get on to me about this. But uh, why? Because anyway. because you washed your car with us, you know, some pro- some product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and right there was soapy off, stuff, and water. it was running into the. Uh, somebody did somebody yell at you when they were driving by? Were they walking by? What happened? No, they're walkers. Yeah, it's, it's all these people in the neighborhood. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I'm wasting water. And, uh, uh, you know, it's non potable. <laughs> anyways, this is great. Coming off the car, I literally, I grew up washing my parents' car uh, every week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. I've washed and, uh, my car by hand several times over the years. Yeah, uh, and a lot when I was younger. Absolutely. I did that around here. I'm telling you, that's the new dangerous ground. I, it, it happened to me. <laughs> yeah. So. That's that's Anyways, that's yeah, yeah. bad. All right. I appreciate your call, sir. Thank you. Uh, Becky in Arlington, you are on 820 AM and now 93.3 FM WBAP. Hi, Becky. Hey, Chris. The reason I was calling, um, I just love Ted Cruz and I always have. I even wanted him to be in there instead of Trump, but now that Trump, I love Trump now, so I just think Ted would make a great uh, vice president nominee. I always said I just hope I live long enough to see Ted 
as president. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't think he should be the vice president. I think he's perfect where he's at. He's a gadfly. And that's he's he's like really good as a gadfly. And that's a that's a compliment. Uh, Circu- uh-huh. uh, Hercule- uh, Hercule- I can't t- um, what's his name? Uh, Socrates talked about uh, being a gadfly. You know, it's a you know he's going around there buzzing and, and uh, raising some stink, and people don't like it. Thank you, Becky. I appreciate your call. All right, next on the Chris Crock Show. Uh, ABC host is, uh, issues warning on most important election of our time. No more crying wolf. Uh, George, fake news, Stephanopoulos also, and uh, many others, including Joe Biden's cap, uh, campaign itself, are literally all showing signs that they think that there's no way they're going to win this fall. Uh, that's coming up next on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 uh, and now on FM 93.3. And by the way, let's just play this again for the more rejects I work with. I got blisters on my fingers! <laughs> Uh, y'all have just lit a fire under my butt, and uh, y- you know what they say, don't feed the animals when you go to the zoo, or, you know, they might bite you and stuff. Well, you-, you fed me, so I can't, a, this is not going to go, this is going to go off a cliff here, based on your encouragement. You really should not do that. Uh, shame on you. Well, I enjoy it, actually. Thanks for the extra food, but uh, yeah, you've done it. It's like giving a dog a treat or something, or a bone. Here is... This is, uh, oh, I don't know which twit this is, uh, news in the news world. Uh, I think it's a C- uh, NBC News lady. Anyway, here she is oh, from CBS News lady. Here she is. But two thirds of voters think the economy was better under President Trump. Well, that's just not the case. And we have to do a better job of laying out the facts that the economy has dramatically improved under the leadership of President Joe Biden. But if if those are the facts, why don't voters believe it? Is that a communication problem? Voters understand that more needs to be done, that there are challenges that remain. I love how he's talking like this because he doesn't have an answer for how bad the president is. That's Hakeem Jeffries. Ha, ha, ha. I can't impersonate him. He's like, there's a guy from movies in the 80s that was a character actor guy, and he was so funny, and he, he did these, he acted like a moron. That's kind of how Hakeem Jeffries talks. Like, ha, 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 ha. Like, he's the guy's a moron. Ha, 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 ha. But literally, he's like, I wish you could see me on my Hakeem Jeffries impersonation. Ha ha. Oh, I can't remember. It was like, there was some guy. I can't. I got to look it up. It's too, too, many, too many obscure references are in my head that you'll be like, I don't know who that guy is. I don't know what you're talking about. So, Chris, you're mentally ill, which is true. Okay. Um, so that's uh, Jonathan Carl on ABC News saying that. But then we also have George Stephanopoulos is saying this as well, saying that, uh, what does he say here? He, the regular host of ABC's This Week similarly warned at the end of April. Ladies and gentlemen, the ship has sunk. It's not sinking, it has sunk. I declare, I repeat, the ship has sunk. Stephanopoulos said, uh, it's all too easy to fall into reflexive habits to treat this as a normal campaign where both sides embrace the rule of law, where both sides are dedicated to debate based on facts and the peaceful transfer of power. But that's not what's happening this election year. Folks, this election year, people are being prosecuted for being uh, politicians, folks. People are having uh, fake trials and putting people on trial and going to put them in jail just because they don't like their politics. Oh, wait, no, he's not saying that. That's not what's happening this election year. Those bedrock tenets of democracy are being tested in a way we haven't seen since the Civil War. It's a test for the candidates and for those of us in the media, for those of us, the citizens. So they're all saying this is it. The world will melt in front of your eyes and we will all die and become, uh, uh, I think, uh, like an Indiana Jones where they all melt when the uh, Ark of the Covenant is open. They look. Meantime... Reporter stunned by Biden's voters' comments on the economy. Nostalgia for Trump years is really shocking me. So that is what uh, ABC News this week 
Uh, reporter, I mentioned Jonathan Carl. I played that for you at the very beginning. White House correspondent Ozma Khalid confessed the Biden campaign would have trouble selling its message on Trump because, quote, many voters are looking at this election as a referendum on Biden. She says she's been surprised by Democrat voters telling her on the campaign trail they have nostalgia for the Trump years. Democrat voters have nostalgia for the Trump years, they're telling her. What I've already heard in so many of my interviews with people is a lackluster sense of enthusiasm, whether it's black voters, you would call them sort of disaffected Republicans, to make this a referendum on Trump sure is what the Biden campaign wants, but it's really challenging because many voters are looking at this election as a referendum on Biden. Then we have uh, Biden races to Trump proof his agenda. Left less than four weeks after taking office, Trump and senior White House aides and a group of Republican lawmakers gathered in the Oval Office to sign a revolution, that, a resolution that killed an obscure Obama ad era energy regulation. So now Biden's afraid all this, all of his uh, work destroying our country will be wiped out. They're looking back at what happened in 2017 to how uh, Trump dismantled uh, everything he could on Hussein Obama's administration. He doesn't want a repeat of that in 2025. So they're doing all these things to uh, to uh, what do you call it? Trump proof his regulations and all of his illegal things he's been done. So they're, they're already doing that. Low confidence. Here's another one from Gallup today. This is a brand new poll from Gallup. Ready? Confidence in Biden economic stewardship is historically low. So, um, lowest Gallup poll, with Americans less optimistic about the state of the U.S. economy than what they've been in recent months, concerned about inflation persisting, the confidence in President Joe Biden to recommend to do the right thing for the economy is among the lowest Gallup has measured for any president in 24 years. Biden is not alone. Uh, blah, 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 blah. 46% of United States adults say they have a great deal or fair amount of confidence in Trump to do the right thing for the economy. 46%. However, only 38 say that for Biden. So Trump leads Biden on doing a great deal or having a fair amount of confidence or a great deal of confidence in, in, in to lead this country economically. As Trump is at 46, Biden's at 38. Trump has an eight-point advantage. Whew. So uh, you have that. Then you have, this is going to stun you. You ready? Trump ties Biden with suburban women. Remember, that was the key for that literally is the key for Biden went but all the suburban women. They're called uh, awfuls. And it's an acronym. I forget what it means, but uh, they're white, they're suburbanites and they're single and they 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 do pretty well financially. So that's that's what an awful is, basically. Um, love their masks, love their covid stuff, hate the cops because they're told to. Oh, they love St. George Floyd. Blessed be his name. Uh, and they would love if they would love to have been that pregnant woman that he uh, put a gun to her belly. Remember that he he was convicted of uh, found guilty of uh, armed robbery to a pregnant woman. He put a gun to her belly. That blessed saint of ours. So many of these women have, would love to be the model. Like, uh, can I? I'm going to get preggers and I'm going to have an abortion. Before I do, I want to be the lady with and pause, pause, pose and be with my big pregnant belly before I abort it, the fetus, uh, the baby. And I want to have my arms up in the air and have a gun in my belly and have Saint George, have it be that for that statue of St. George Floyd robbing that woman when he, when he did that in Houston. St. George Floyd, excuse me. Blessed be his name. Can I be that model of St. George Floyd? Blessed be his name. So, um, yeah, Trump and Biden are now tied among suburban women. This is insane. 45-45. He's leading among uh, kids under 30 now. Did you see that? It's, it's, I mean, adults under 30. That, that's, I mean, this is, I'm not going to say a blowout, but it could be, but I don't think so. We, if we can just win by a margin, they, they can't cheat, which is going to be, it's going to need to be instead of uh, 10 or 20 or 30 or 40,000 votes in you know Pennsylvania or Arizona or Georgia, it's going to need to be 200,000 plus, you know, something that's just, you can't cheat. Like we cheated so much, but we still couldn't beat that, 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 that margin, you know, something like that. Also, you have new limits on Biden's public speaking. I'm going to give you those details. They're literally limiting him now. They're hiding him again on purpose. So, I mean, why would you be, why, who would hide their candidate, candidate in the middle of the campaign? Who would hide their candidate? We'll give, I'll give you those details from some uh, very unlikely sources They're like wow uh, that's up next but my question is does it seem like does it seem like to you does it seem like the media and Biden already know he's going to lose the election in November 
Does it seem like that to you? And is this tactic going to help awaken people to see how bad Trump is by all these people making, you know, George Stephanopoulos, Jonathan Carl from ABC News, all these people. Oh, and uh, did you hear uh, James Carville, the raging Cajun, the guy who uh, was a Clinton, you know, top Clinton advisor for Bill Clinton? Did you hear what he said? He was yelling at voters, young voters. When you yell at the people you want to vote for your guy, that that's not good. I mean, if you would, how would you respond if somebody yelled at you because it's to entice you to vote for them? You stupid idiot! That's literally what he does here. I'll play that for you next. Uh, but I want to hear from you. 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Does it seem like the media and Biden already know that Biden's going to lose the election in November? And is this tactic... Um, you know, saying this is it. It's, it's the worst election of all time. We're going to lose all that. Is this tactic going to help awaken people to see how bad Trump is? Quote unquote. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. Well, there we are. Uh, News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it up reset. Chris Croc show. 800-288-9227. That's 800-288-9227. All right. Here is what I wanted to play for you. You know you are up blank bleeps creek if you have the raging Cajun James Carville, uh, who was uh, responsible for getting Clinton elected and keeping him elected. Uh, it's Bill Clinton. Here he is yelling at younger voters. Listen to this. This is he's, he's going to yell at them to get them to vote for uh, Joe Biden and his failed uh, campaign. There will be no government left. There will be no rights left. You will live under theocracy. You will end up Christian nationalism. But that's all right, you little 26 year old. You don't feel like the election's important to me. They're not addressing the issues that I care about. My advice to tell these young people to get off your ass and go vote because you should vote like your entire future and the entire future of this United States depends on it because, quite frankly, it does. And that's not an exaggeration. Well, what do you think? Does that get you? Is that like, uh, what do they say? They say that uh, you can track bees with honey and uh, flies with vinegar or something. What do they say? So it appears that vinegar is uh, vinegar is how you get people to vote for you. Throw vinegar on them. Right? What, what is that? What, do you, what would you describe that as? Is that throwing vinegar on your face or is that like throwing lighter fluid on your face and l- lighting your face on fire? I don't know. Is it, what's that feeling? What's that feeling? Let's play it again. How, if you're the younger voter that he's yelling at, does this, how does this feel to you? Does it feel like uh, you're, you're, you smell the nice, s- subtle uh, honey uh, wafting, some fresh honey wafting under your nostrils? Or does it, or does it feel like uh, vinegar? There will be no government left. There'll be no rights left. You'll live under theocracy. You'll end up Christian nationalism. But that's all right, you little 26 year old. You don't feel like the election's important to me. They're not addressing the issues that I care about. My advice to tell these young people to get off your ass and go vote because you should vote like your entire future and the entire future of this United States depends on it because quite frankly it does and that's not an exaggeration that sounds like your grandpa's coming out and yelling at you because he's literally yelling at you and screaming at you to go vote today for Joe Biden that's what that sounds like okay uh, this is incredible there are Hamas supporters Waving the Palestinian flag at Auschwitz right now. Police sirens sound outside of Auschwitz. Holocaust survivors and October 7th victims are walking for March of Living and Gaza protesters are chanting at them. All right, uh, you've got Hamas supporters and Jew haters protesting, waving Hamas flags and actually waving Palestinian flags at Auschwitz right now. I wonder if 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 they could go over there and grab a Jew and and put him in the firing squad line and kill him. I mean, I'm watching. I, I I mean, that's what's next. What else do you do? 
I mean, they're literally at Auschwitz supporting people who support Hitler. Isn't that amazing? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's what's going on in our world right now. Uh, NBC News is uh, saying the, uh, quote, President Biden, as he ramps up his reelection effort, his campaign is scaling back how much he says on the trail. Part of a new strategy, a larger new strategy to hone a sharper message he'll take to the general election. Less, less is more approach. Aim for qual- quality over quantity when it comes to the president's public appearance. So literally, they're like, we want to have good appearances, but not many of them, like a rare thing. We're hiding the president. He's literally trying to be reelected as the president of the United States of America, and they're hiding him like he's a rare, precious stone of some sort. There's a strategic advantage at this point in the race to boiling down your message to three or four most salient, compelling arguments for uh, Biden's campaign, senior campaign advisor for administrations. That'll also translate to the stump speech being whittled down to its sharpest, most dynamic form. That's what you're seeing. So that you're, they're literally letting him speak for a few minutes and then yanking him off the stage. Isn't that amazing? I do think they're uh, they're in the middle of a big fat turd sandwich. They have it half eaten, and they're about to vomit. They can't eat anymore. They thought they could, you know, they thought they could eat the whole turd sandwich um, because of the amount of money they would make, and the glory, and everything, and the power. But they're sweating. It's like you're at the uh, you're at the uh, steakhouse there in Amarillo, the uh, the big Texan steakhouse. And you, you're up on that, that, that spectacle, that, that big area, you're trying to eat the whole steaks and everything on the plate, so you win it for free. And you realize, like, a quarter of the halfway through, you're like, a quarter of the way through, you think, I, I don't think I'm going to make this. No, don't even think it. Halfway through, you're like, I'm going to vomit now. And you're sweating, you got the meat sweats. And you realize, I'm just going to pay the 50 or 80 bucks for this piece of steak and just declare uh, I lost. 